Welcome to my lecture online. Today you might notice that my voice isn't working at 100%. I'm stuck with a bit of a cold and so I'm going to work my way through this as best I can. But what we're going to do today here is work on some thermodynamics and we're going to start with trying to determine the temperature of the sun based upon knowing what the solar constant is at an average distance between the earth and the sun and what the average distance is. And of course, you're also going to know, know the, uh, need to know the radius of the sun, and that will come later here. Of course, you also need to know sigma, which is the constant used in the Stefan Boltzmann's law. So how do we determine the temperature of the sun? Well, we're going to need a few equations, so we probably are going to need the equation, the Stefan Boltzmann's law, that says the QDT, the amount of heat coming from the sun, is equal to E, the emissivity, times sigma times the surface area of the sun times the temperature to the fourth power. And then uh, we also probably going to need the equation that relates the intensity of the radiation to the uh, power of the object and distance away from the object. So we can say that the intensity is equal to the power divided by the area, which in this case would be the power of the sun divided by 4 pi a squared, and that would be the, uh, <clears throat> the area of the orbit of the Earth, the, well, basically the area of a sphere made by the radius of the orbit of the Earth. So that would be this R right here. And uh, then, of course, the surface area of the Sun would be the surface area of the Sun right there. We may need to know Wien's Law, just in case. And so that says that the temperature of an object is equal to 0 0.0029. That would be... Um, <clears throat> would be Kelvin times meters divided by the wavelength of the peak radiation of the black body radiation curve. Now assuming that we don't know that, we can use Wien's law, we'll need to use the other two equations. So also we need to realize that dQ dt is essentially the power output of the sun. So if we can figure out what the power is from this equation, plug it in here, we'll be able to calculate the temperature. So essentially, what we want here is we want to say that the temperature to the fourth power is equal to the power of the sun divided by E sigma divided by the area of the sun, the surface area. And so that means that the temperature is equal to the fourth power, that would be a four right here, times the, uh, the fourth power of the power of the sun divided by E sigma A of the sun. Now notice that the the emissivity of the sun, the emissivity of a perfect black body is equal to 1, and for most stars that is very, very close to being equal to 1. So we can go ahead and say E is equal to 1. We understand the constant of the seven Boltzmann's laws right here, and then we'll figure out the area of the sun in a little while. First, we need to find the power output of the sun. So we can say that the power is equal to the intensity of the radiation that reaches us times the surface area of the sphere made by the radius of the Earth. <clears throat> so the power is equal to I times 4 pi times, ooh, that shouldn't be A, that should be, of course, R, R squared. So that would be 4 pi times the radius squared. There we go, and that would be the radius of the orbit, like this. Okay, let's plug in some numbers and see what we get. So the power is equal to 1361 watts per square meter times 4 pi times the radius of the orbit of the Earth, that would be 149.58 times 10 to the, now this would be in terms of meters, so this is 149 million kilometers, that would be 149 billion meters, so times 10 to the 9th meters squared. Notice meters squared meters squared will cancel out and we're left with watts. So let's see what this is equal to. So it'd be 1361 times 4 times pi times 149.58 e to the 9th squared equals, and we end up with something pretty big. So the power output of the sun is equal to 3.8266 8266 times 10 to the 26 watts. All right, that's a lot of power. Now we're going to plug that in here and see what we get. So that means that the temperature is equal to the fourth root of the power, 3.8266 times 10 to the 26 
divided by impassivity, let's call it one. That would be, of course, watts. The uh, sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus eight. That would be watts per meter squared times Kelvin to the fourth power. So we take the fourth root of Kelvin to the fourth power, we just get Kelvin. And then we multiply that times, let's make it a little bigger, uh, the surface area of the sun, that would be four pi, and the radius is 696,000 kilometers, so it would be 696 times 10 to the uh, sixth, because we want to convert that to meters, meters, and we want to square that. So the square meters of square, square meters cancel out. All right, so let's divide that by 5.67 times e to the minus 8. Divide by 4, divide by pi, divide by 696, e to the 6th square equals, take the fourth root, and we get 5,770 degrees Kelvin. So it's 5,770 uh, 5, Kelvin. Notice that's approximately equal to 5,500 degrees centigrade or Celsius. So that is the approximate surface temperature of the sun. Of course, there's some slight variations in our exact ability to know the exact radius of the sun, the exact power output, and so forth. But that's a pretty good estimate for the surface temperature of the sun. I would not want to get too close to that. Uh, that's pretty hot. And that is how it's done.